want to deal with the money presence of God. The money presence of God. Now, the Holy Spirit will give you as much money as you prove to him that you can steward over without turning your heart from him. Remember what I just said there. Holy Spirit will give you as much money as you want that as long as it will not turn your heart away from him. If it's not going to affect your servanthood, you can have how much money you want. There's not a limit. There's not a limit. And it's actually different in the Holy Spirit's way because according to man, you have a lot of money because you save a lot of money. But the more money you're willing to sow is determining the money that you're, you're really going to have. And so it's very different God's way because God's way is that show me the fruits that I am your provider and I'll show you the fruits that I'm Jehovah Jireh. You see what I'm saying? My God. My God, Sh show me the fruits that you trust me and I'll show you the fruits that I'm the richest person on earth. The Holy Ghost, the richest person on earth. Show me the fruits that you honor me and I'll show you the fruits that I honor you. So saints, th this type of lifestyle is, is activated by you. God gave me a wisdom door that the presence of God doesn't birth intelligence but the pursuit of God, your pursuit of God births intelligence because King Jesus's presence was around Pharisees that stayed stupid. King Jesus walked past lepers that stayed lepers, liars that stayed liars, blind men that stayed blind. So it wasn't his presence that was the, the intelligence impartation. It was the pursuit. See, King Jesus is looking for a woman that will run after him. King Jesus is looking for a man that will run after him. He looking for someone that will leave behind everything to go after him. That's why the words say that David was a man after God's own heart. That means that David would have a conversation. Then he'll say, Lord, was I supposed to say that? I felt like you didn't agree with that. Are you okay with that? See, that's what makes you stray from God that you, you forget to do those things. We on social media, we like everybody posts. Do you know how God feels? If you like that person's post. Do you know how God feels if you follow that person on social media? If you email somebody. If you go visit a location and God is nowhere in your visitation. See. You got to get all of these parts of you in submission to the Holy Ghost. If you want him to trust you with unlimited money, because he'll do it. But saints, I'm a man that steps are ordered by the Lord. I don't go nowhere unless the Holy Ghost tell me to go. I don't, I don't talk to nobody. This phone, I'm a businessman. I don't answer nobody unless the Holy Ghost tell me. I don't go where I'm not sent. Is God okay with you liking that person's post? You watching their video? You following them? You, you, you. Are you is God okay with you sitting at lunch with that person at your job? Is God okay with you having conversation with people? Saints, do you know sometimes you can talk to people and tell certain people stuff and God say, you shouldn't have said that to them. Do you know the closer you get to God, 
He'll check you if you slander somebody incorrectly. He'll check you. He'll tell you, you should have said that. You should have said that. Saints, this is the lifestyle you're going to have to learn and receive and embrace and celebrate. And this not all, you know, is, is but it's so hard. If it's so hard, baby, just just keep your two dollars and go about your business. Keep keep your two dollars. Keep your two dollars where nobody want to holler and go about your business. If it's too hard for you, if it's too hard for you right now, baby, just go on with your two dollars, your two cent and go on about your business. Live, live your life hard. Live your life hard. Hard headed. Live your life like that. Live your life cursed. Demons laughing at you. Demons laughing at you because they know you ain't got no power. All you got is talk. You ain't got no power. You can't abstain from anything that God says is illegal. If you want to live that type of life where you have to present this image, but you don't real, you ain't got no real power. Demons don't heed you. They're not afraid of you. Angels don't respect you. They look at you. They, oh, I know that by this time tomorrow, he going to be back in the crack bin. By this time tomorrow, she going to be back there with, with, the, with the pigeons. Back there tomorrow, he going to be back there with the scrubs. See, the Holy Spirit got to be able to confide in you if he going to give cash to you. I said this. The Holy Spirit going to have to be able to confide in you if he going to be able to give cash to you. I'm going to say this. The Holy Spirit going to have to be able to confide in you if he going to be if he going to be able to give cash to you. Why would God give you riches if he's still trying to give you stitches from your own falls? Why would God give you riches if he's still attempting to give you stitches from your own falls? He's still trying to nurse you from all your decisions that curse you. Think about that. He's still trying to nurse you from all your decisions that curse you. Saints, the curse doesn't come causeless because you cause the curse. It's decisions that cause curses. It's choices that cause curses. Your distraction is causing a curse. Your free will is creating all of your prisons. Your free will. Your free will. Oh, I do what I want. I felt like doing it. Okay. All right. Friendship with God is going to have to be at an all time high before he can make you rich. Because you're not going to bring Everybody you want into the equation of your wealth. Sometimes you got to tear up your plans of who you wrote down going to be a part of your wealthy place. You got to tear it up. You told us, oh, my cousin been going through. I'm going to help her out when, you, when I get this money. I'm going to help her out. Baby, your cousin didn't sow the seed that you sowed. So you're going to take the harvest money that God give you and give it to your cousin. God got a purpose of why he going to give you the harvest money. This God don't see stuff like you. You think that's your cousin. If that's your cousin, why she not doing what you do? Why she didn't sow the seed that you sowed? 
So you telling me that you call somebody your family that won't make the decisions you make? You call somebody of your family that don't do what you do. They don't have the same God, but that's your brother. That's your cousin. God will disown you. I said God will disown you. I said God will disown you. The Bible said if you deny me, I'll deny you. It's so much things that you can do in a day that grieves God. That's the reason why many people can't wave their hand and the power of God move. That's why many people can't blow and the power of God hit. Because God not interested in a lot of stuff you interested in. He not interested in a lot of stuff that you interested in. Why wasn't God talking in Samuel's day like that? Everybody's decisions was things that irritated him. He didn't want to see it. So he turned his back. He didn't want to watch. You said, well, well, prophet, who was watching the earth? He got watching angels. They give an account. They write down the events that go on. People's personal angel give the event of their decisions. And these angels are duplicates of God. They are not liars. They keep account. They keep record. Do you know the stuff that irritate God in your life? Do you know what doesn't make him happy with you? God is not always happy with you. It doesn't matter if he called you or chose you. He not always happy with you. And if you're smart, you'll take time to find out what makes God angry. Number one, God never likes when someone experiences major blessings from anyone and they don't serve that person. If someone changes your mind, your life, your finances, your opportunities, your behavior, your conduct, and you go your merry way. God doesn't like that. And he marks people that do that. He marked them. Your life don't turn out good. You might meet a boyfriend. You might, oh, this is my boyfriend. Ba ba ba. God will use that man to hurt you. Because he'll surround you. You could be with somebody for five years. It could be just heaven on earth. And boom. Because he doesn't like that. When God is not happy. Everything goes left. When God is not happy, everything goes left. And it may not go left immediately. Sometimes it takes time. Everything goes left. Nothing goes right. Oh, just love him. Oh, just love him. Saints, don't even take the time. If you learn to love him from a pure place, you won't have to worry about none of this. If you go before his face and say, Lord, I want wisdom to make every decision that you want. Please show me what hurts you. Show me what makes you cry. Show me what makes you feel bad. You'll never have another destructive day in your life. You'll never live another cursed day in your life. Curses will not be able to prevail against you if you learn how to go to King Jesus and say, King Jesus, if there's anything in my life that you don't like me doing, I ask you to give me wisdom to stop doing it. Make me disgusted in what grieves you. Saints, you may have never thought about this, but you know one of the most deadliest things is that you often enjoy what gives God the greatest pain. 
It can be a conversation. Well, 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 well. All I did was just call them on the phone. I don't see nothing wrong with that. I just called them on the phone. It's not like I went go live with them. Everything matters to God when he's jealous to, for you. Everything matters to God when he's jealous for you. Well, uh, Uncle Jardine just died and uh, they asked us if we would give $5 to the funeral. Uh, just need $5 per person just for the funeral of Jardine. That's a so I gave my five dollars. I don't see nothing wrong with it. It's just a funeral. Most times, Jaredine never even gave God five dollars in a seed. Most times, Jaredine never even took Jaredine's money to honor God with it. And you got God's money? And you pit it into Jaredine, who never pit any money into God? And took her money and bought liquor? And bought drugs? And bought all type of things that made her happy in her sin. And you take God's money and you support Jaredine. I don't see nothing wrong with it. I just, I just, we all supposed to help each other. When God is jealous for you, everything matters. Everything. And if you don't want God to have his eyes on you, he'll pitch you in the place where he has his eyes on nobody there. God doesn't study anybody in hell and say, oh, he pleasing me today. Oh, she, oh, she, I, I love how she worshiping me today. Nobody in hell gets that from God. God is disinterested in everybody in hell. So if you don't want God's attention to be on you, you'll spend all eternity where people go that have that type of life. God doesn't pay attention to anybody in hell and say, oh, I would love to hug her. Oh, look at my beloved here. Oh, my beloved. Oh, poor little Clarice. See, sometimes your IQ level is not there. I pray that God will give you a brain. Father, let's pray for five people on this line. Let's pray for 10, maybe 20. How about maybe we pray for everybody, Father? That they will keep a brain cell committed to you for the rest of their days. How far would you be if you had a brain that was connected to the Holy Spirit? That you'll stop looking at if something is so small but it's big to God. Are you close to God? Yes, I'm very close to God. I know him. Okay. How many sick people have you healed? Well, I pray for this. No, I'm talking about documented. I'm talking about if I called them right now, they'll tell me that you laid your hands on them. They got here. OK, not much. All right. How many people have you prayed for? You got them out of addictions, sins. Their life took a 360 turn. They no longer do what they used to do because of your presence. How many people? Okay. How many decrees of the blessing? I'm not talking about dumb stuff. Where I speak and it come to pass. 
my words always come to pass. Uh, yeah. But I don't see much cars in your life. I don't see your house. I don't see all that stuff. So, um, uh, if stupid comes to pass when you speak, I'm talking about this word of God. What of this word that is of the blessing do you speak and it happens? That angels facilitate at the sound of your mouth. If those things are not happening, how close are you really to God? Well, well, prophet, you know, it don't matter what we have and what we got. That doesn't define whether we're close to God or not. Yeah. Understood. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But he's a reward of they that diligently seek him. So if you're constantly seeking God, I will be able to see the rewards of you seeking him. I will see what in your life has occurred because you're only in the face of God. Only because you're in the face of God. Because you're not going to the left. Because you're not going to the right. These are the results and the rewards for your consistency. How could you tell me that you're close to God and you don't seek him? And if you seek him, how come I can't discover your rewards? Well, my rewards are spiritual. They're spiritual. Yeah. Go talk to Big Daddy Abraham and tell him that too. His rewards were spiritual. When he was riding on the horses, the chariots. Go tell Job when he had I think he had how much she asses. I wonder why they didn't call it he asses. I guess it was He wasn't an LGBT worker. And how he is the richest man on the east. And how he's the richest man on the east. Go tell him that, that his rewards were spiritual. You're going to tell Solomon that they brought ships of millions of dollars to him just so that he can buy more things, just so that he can make the house of God look even more beautiful. He built a gold house for the presence of God. If you are close to Jesus, if you're seeking first the kingdom, all other things will be added to you. If all other things have not been added, you don't really got it like everybody else to be dumb. When will you come to the point in your life where you realize I'm fed up of this? I'm not going to be living down here on this earth with no fake Christianity, with no fake salvation, with no fake born again life. I'm not going to be up there fake and talking about I know God all my life. I'm going to get this thing right. Holy Spirit, what grieves you? I'm not going to have another decision in the direction of your grief. The money presence of God will flow as a result of that. Because the Holy Spirit will start showing you what he likes, what he enjoys, what he wants from you. And the, the power of the Holy Ghost will flow to make you rich. See, saints, before God started blessing me, and I started moving in the glory cloud. He taught me of what he didn't like. I'm not ignorant. I know. I know. I know. I know. And so he saw fit. For me to be a prophet so that you could know. Because I'm telling you. How in your everyday life you make decisions and you never find out. How did God feel about that decision I just made? What did he think about that? Did that hurt him? Did that make him feel disrespected? Do, do you know if your decisions is disrespecting God? And how do you know that is respecting him? 
If you never went to him and found out, Lord, is this disrespectful to you? Saints, there are people that when I find out that God feels disrespected, I don't have nothing to do with them anymore. I'm talking about not one thing. I'm talking about I don't have nothing to do with them at all. Listen, I don't see them. Not in the physical, not in the spiritual, not in the emotional. I'm talking about male, female, son, daughter, mentor, mentee, whatever. When the Holy Spirit lets me know, I find no pleasure in that. My mouth, my mind. My body, my hands, my feet, every part of me becomes alienated. Completely. Without one single struggle. Without one single struggle. If you're not in this kingdom for Jesus, the king of kings alone, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. If you're not in this gospel for King Jesus alone, you're not going to make it. I'm live all today. 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 Breaking up the follow grip. The money presence of God. The money presence of God. That money presence can only operate in the environment of those that are scared of God. It only can operate in the environment of those that are scared of the Lord. If you're not scared of God, his money presence can't move in your presence. I've heard people say for years, oh, you, you know, if you be scared of God, you know, he don't want us to be scared of him. That's the problem. People don't be scared of God. That's why they do what they do. They don't know that God will beep you up. And Apostle Paul said it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And when God starts fighting you, he don't stop because you ask him for mercy. He don't stop because all he deal with is when I was giving you a chance to seek me, you had no part with me. They don't tell you that God created hell because he didn't create it by mistake. He created it because he's saying, if you want to be a nigger, I'm going to pitch you where niggers go. If you want to be friends with niggas, I'm going to pitch you with friends of niggas go. If you want free will and follow your decision and do what makes you feel like you're in control, I'm going to pitch you where everybody that feel like they was in control go. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. Let's go to verse 22. Chapter 1. How long, you simple ones, will love simplicity? It's talking about stupidity. Simplicity is another word for stupidity in certain brackets. Simplicity can also mean that, that you're easy to deal with. But simplicity is... In a mental bracket is dealing with a fool, someone that's stupid. So here God is saying, oh, you stupid ones, how long will you choose to be stupid? How long will you love stupidity? Oh, my cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. I just, I just had to step into some Mexicans for least Navidad tongues. I just, how long will you... 
Somebody give me some nachos. How long will you love stupidity? And, and the scorners delight in their scorning. And the fools hate knowledge. Saints, do you know what a fool hating knowledge means? It means that God sends somebody to teach you and you hate their teaching. You hate what they've been sent to tell you. So you listen to everything other than what they're saying. Saints, this is Proverbs chapter 1. Holy Spirit, I pray. These people that's watching me. Some of them, I know them, they don't know who they is. Father, I pray this day as I stand in your presence as you told me to do this. Holy Ghost, I ask you to open up their eyes. The eyes of their understanding. To what you have spoken to me in secret. Lord, don't let them be deceived by themselves. Fools hate knowledge. That means that how long will you hate your Moses? How long will you hate your Elijah? How long will you hate your Solomon? The person that has the words that you're supposed to hear. They have the ministry you're supposed to receive from. See, God is frustrated. He's stressed out. This text, God is stressed out. He's saying, how long? How long I got to look at this? How long do you, ex you, you expect me to calm down and not do nothing? You think I'm not going to say nothing? You think I ain't going to do nothing? You think I'm not going to retaliate? How long do I have to sit and watch you destroy what I made? Built up in you. Around you. How long? Let's go to verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you if you turn at my reproof. That means if you repent, if you listen to what I say, I will pour out my spirit unto you. See, God's spirit is not with you. When you do, are you seeing this? I'm giving you the Bible. This in your Bible too. This in your Bible too. Where was you when the fat witch jumped on me? I did, no, that did, did it, spirit. Did it. Did it, did it, did it. And keyed the car. And keyed the car. That's what happened. And keyed the car. And keyed the car. I think he had a pink shirt. He had a pink shirt too, his pink shirt. Where would you with the fat witch jumped on me? I had to switch it to the fat witch because if I said the other word, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to so I, I tried I could fix I could fix it. Where would you with the fat snitch jumped on me? The fat snitch. Um or, or, or I could switch it if you hungry, then you should say, Where would you with the fat sandwich had jumped on me? If you Fat sandwich. You can switch that up too. You deal with a sandwich. Deal with a sandwich. Any type of sandwich. Subway sandwich. McDonald's sandwich. They don't get no love no more but burger. Burger King sandwich. All uh, that water burger sandwich. All uh, that sandwich. I don't know why they like water burger. I thought that the burger tastes like water. You know, but but somebody said it was water burger. Like I, well, 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 what? Or water is still the same thing. It's still the same difference. Water and what still has to have the same reaction when you eat it. You say, what is this? Is it water? Is it water what? What? Water. Water burger. Water burger. Verse 23. I will pour out my spirit if you turn. And I will make known my words unto you. Look at God. 
God saying, you don't even know my word until you humble yourself. And you love the knowledge that I have scheduled for your mind. And you love what I have planned for your path. And you love the authority that I have given to you. You don't know me. You don't know my word. So don't be so quick to say that you love God and you know God and you've been with God. Because you actually got to go through a place of drilling and training before you can actually know who God is. Because he has to tell you what he doesn't like before he can expose to you the precious part of his person. God can't get naked around you until he experiences your readiness to receive who he is. Look at this, verse 24. Because I have called and you refused, and I have stretched out my hand, and you did not regard me. Look what the Bible says. Because you have set at naught all my counsel. Do you know what counsel means? That means that God comes to you and suggests his things. He tells you, well, I don't really think that you should do this. Well, why are you doing this? Do you know why you're doing this? No, don't do that. I don't think that you. Suggestions is his counsel. That means that he's not forcing it on you. He's giving you counsel. He's letting you know that according to what you know, is this really the best decision? According to what I have taught you, is this the best route? Do you think that I'm in agreement with this route that you're taking? God does this with all of us. There's nobody that he doesn't do it with. When he comes to you and he shows you, according to your decision making, do you think I'm in approval of this? After what I've taught you, do you think I agree with this? Imagine if God teaches you not to eat any mustard and you get invited to a mustard um, event and you go to the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you for divine favor that I'm able to go to the mustard event. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Huh? <laughs> if a donkey, if a donkey can talk, if a donkey, a donkey can talk like, if a donkey, huh? Uh, Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for, I want to thank you for the divine favor that you have given me to go to the mustard. And I want to thank you for opening doors for my life. I want you, I want to thank you for blessing my life with this opportunity. I'm so favored of God. I'm so favored of God. The favor of God is on me. I just got an open door to go to the mustard place. Now, mind you, God, God told me not to go to the mustard place, but I've been favored. He, he taught me, he trained me not to go to the mustard place. I'm in the mustard place because I'm favored. Oh, my gosh. Father, I just want to thank you for favoring me. I want to thank you for favoring me. I want to thank you. I just want to say thank you for opening up the door for me to attend the mustard. But you have said that not all my counsel and would have none of my reproof. Look what it said in verse 26. I will laugh at your calamity. Says it's scary. Look, God didn't say, I will keep on being merciful to you. He said, I will laugh at your calamity and I will mock you when your fear cometh. Wait a daggone minute here. He said, I will laugh at your destruction. When you destroy yourself, I'm going to laugh at you. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, you, you, I, I enjoyed you. I love you. I'm going to laugh at the fact that you destroyed yourself. Because you didn't stay where I picked you. Look what the word of God said. And I will mock you when your fear cometh. 
That means God not only going to laugh at you, but he going to be slandering you and telling you you're stupid. You're dumb. Retarded. He said he going to mock you. Do you know what happened when people mock you? They say, <laughs> oh, I'm praying, right? Oh, I'm praying, right? Ha, ta, 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 Oh, cha 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 to the moon. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah now. Look at you now. See, people don't know God. But the God is all in the Bible. Go read it for yourself. When you mock somebody, that means that you verbally and physically make an imitation of their decisions and you laugh at it. It becomes a parody to you. Saints, when Miriam said, God talks to me too, God laughed. But then he started mocking her. <laughs> oh, I, oh, oh, God talks to me too, right? Okay, well, talk to this leprosy you got on your body. Talk to this leprosy. That's what mock means. And saints, Aaron knew something about God that when he lost his mind, he lost his mind. Moses knew that too. Because when Moses saw him opening up the ground and killing people, Moses said, Where, where's, the, where's the sacrifice? And so here's what happens. This is the New Testament. We're underneath a new covenant is new grace. And that's why the judgment is heavier. Duh. See, you think that if you say that we underneath a new covenant, we got new grace. It's easy. It's better now. It's a better covenant. That's how heavier your judgment going to be. It's going to be worse than what they experience. Because the fact that God has made it so better and new and easy and understandable and you have so much weapons. If you lose underneath this new covenant, how much more? Your torment. How much more? Your torment. See, people don't think about it like that. If it's greater grace and greater ability and greater power and greater gifts of the spirit and greater opportunities and favor and better covenant. How much more the wrath of God will be aroused if you don't take advantage of all of the weapons he has given you, including his death. And you let his blood be in vain in your life. Look what he said. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when your fear cometh. That means that your fear is not always on you when you're in rebellion. You can be in rebellion and feel great about yourself. You can be doing what God grieves at and you don't even have a slight idea, a slight feeling of badness on you. You just keep on going with your jolly way. But he said, I'll mock you when your fear cometh. I'm going to wait until you see the result of your decisions. I'm going to wait till everything goes left. Then I'm going to mock you. I'm going to let you feel like your decision is all good. You in control. You're doing it your way. All is well here. I'm going to wait until you see everything go left. And that's when I'm going to mock you. When it's revealed. The deceiver, when the deceiver, when the deceiver has deceived you, then that's when I'm going to come and mock you. This is scary. This is scary. Don't let no man uh, bewitch you. This is the word of God. Verse 27. When your fear cometh as desolation. When your fear cometh as desolation. You, you know what desolation means? Desolation is like everything going down, withering away. You don't got no help system. You don't got nobody that can bail you out of your distress. Your fear going to come as if you are in hell on earth.
and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. That's like a tornado. Have you ever seen somebody stand in front of a tornado and say, oh, my gosh, <laughs> you're about to touch me. Oh, my God. Oh, tornado, touch me right here, boo. Oh, touch me right here by my forehead. Oh, and the wind's just blowing. Oh, I can't wait till he touch. Oh, my God, he's about to come. Oh, my God. He's about to you never seen nobody stand in front of a tornado excited. You ever seen somebody get turned on by a tornado coming towards them? How many of you all have seen people that wanted to, 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 to just leap for joy that the tornado is coming right in their direction? And your destruction shall cometh as a whirlwind. This is terrifying. This is scary. When distress, distress and anguish come upon thee. Look at verse 28. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Saints, this is scary. Saints, this is in your Bible. He said, then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated my knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and they despised all of my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own ways and they shall be filled with their own devices. For turning away. The money presence of God. By humility and the fear of the Lord. Is riches, honor and life. You're going to have to develop a scare for God. And there's nobody that has ever taught that. Like I just said. Or just now. You have to develop a scare for God. A scare. If you're not scared of God, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Because it's only that that's going to make you say, I'm not going to sin against you. I'm not going to disobey you. I'm not going to throw away what you have invested in me. And choose Satan. Saints, I'll never, I'll never be a sponsor of how a man or a woman can experience God and say, Satan, I love you. Come on, deceive me, Satan. Show me the path that leads to eternal damnation. Show me. How to sin against the God that labored for me. Show me. Show me how to betray the anointing that I have received. Show me how to follow the instructions that come from other masters. Such as your demon spirits that, that are underneath you. Saints, I'm talking to you about a word right now. That some of you all may not even feel like you're acquainted with this word. Because you may be looking at yourself. And saying I'm good. But there's coming a day. Where what I'm talking to you. You're going to have. Two things pointed before you. Life and death. And I'm going to tell you this. If you don't take this serious. The day will come where you will pick death. And when you pick death, you're still going to feel like you're in the place of life. But I'm telling you, when everything is okay. Jesus didn't talk to his disciples about his death when he was in a deadly season. He spoke to them about his death in a season where everything was calm, cool, and collective. He was at the prominent place of miracles. He was at the prominent place of teaching. He was at the prominent place. He spoke to them. He said, do you know that the son of man shall be delivered up by the Jews? And God always speaks to you. When the sun is shining. So that you could have power. 
when the storm comes. The money presence of God. It is God responding to you being scared of him. It is God responding to you being scared of him. Being scared of him in your decisions. Being scared of him in your thoughts. Being scared of him in your words. Being scared of him. And what you have chosen to enjoy. You mean to tell me that I'm enjoying what's making my creator unhappy? Oh, Jesus. You mean to tell me that I find pleasure in what brings God's heart pain? Ah, oh, Jesus. Jesus. I'm alive all day today. I'm alive all day today. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Our Father.
casa, amor. 